that strap going to stay on there. Yep. And action. Oh, Make sure man. to be hot and sweaty. Whew. Yeah. That was pretty go. hard. All right, welcome back to CNC Equipment's YouTube channel. You guys may recognize this bulldozer. Last time you guys seen this, it come in, uh, we sold this thing back uh, early spring, like six, seven months ago. Last time it come in here, we had hydraulic overheating problems. We thought we got it fixed, went through a bunch of things. If you guys have not seen that video, link will be down below in the description. You need to go check it out first, but uh, it's kind of throwing us for a loop, isn't it? So, Went through, I changed the hydraulic oil, changed filters. Um, what else did I do? You wasn't here, was you? Yeah, I changed the temperature sensor. And also, the customer took it back as run. We changed out this uh, pressure relief flow control valve, thinking it may have been it. We tested flow on the pump. It was in spec, like upper end of the spec. Pressure was perfect. So I don't think it's a hydraulic pump, but what's happening, it's overheating after running for a couple hours. It's getting up in that 200 degree range. You guys remember, I actually heated it up in the shop a couple times, took it out there and run it for 45 minutes, and it was actually going back down and stabilized at about 175 or so. So I thought we had it fixed. So um, I talked to the customer a few times. I don't think he's holding any hydraulic levers over. Um, we're starting to run out options. Um, what we're getting ready to do today is actually test the uh, angle angle cylinder pressure relief. I don't think that has anything to do with this overheating, but we've checked everything else out. Um, basically what Kevin's doing, we've got this uh, T in there. We're going to put a gauge in here. Um, we've got a hand pump. The book says pump these up. We've got a relief valve here and here, if you guys can see. This is for the angle cylinder. This is the main pressure relief. It's set at 3,000 PSI. These here on this angle circuit are set at 7,500 PSI. You say, well, that's way higher. How's that going to work? So what that is, it's kind of a safety. Somebody gets a big old stump or sitting there prying on it. Um, if it gets too much pressure, more than 7,500 PSI, it's basically going to bypass and kick off so you don't tear something up on your C-frame, bulldozer, something like that. I do not know. I don't think that would cause any issues with anything we're doing. Um, but we're just going to double check it to make sure. Um, those check out, we get those adjusted. We're going to check the cycle times on the blade. Um, everything seemed okay to me. We may check a cylinder drift test. I don't know if we maybe have a cylinder bypassing, heating oil up. It's kind of weird. I do know when I was running, I didn't do much angling with the blade, especially just pushing straight and grading and stuff like that. So maybe that angle circuit um, is heating up. We're just picking up straws now, ain't we? They're getting shorter and shorter. We're running out of options, so it's either got to be something like that or we could have a crack in this um, housing in here too. We're not sure in the valve body housing, so if we suspect that, I may just change the whole thing out with another one out there and go from that, but the angle situation right now is kind of sounding... Feels good. It, it does. Feels good. <laughs> Maybe it is um, bypassing inside these cylinders, so these basically, uh, how they work, you got oil going on one side, on the back and then on the front angles one way and it's vice versa just the opposite so um, I could see oil maybe bypassing in those but uh, I never noticed the uh, angle circuit weak or anything pushing back like that but uh, who knows we're uh, running out of options like I said we did pull the floorboard off we're looking down here um, at the hydraulic pump make sure we're not sucking any air because if a guy does get uh, air bubbles in the oil it will uh, it will heat up that way so and uh, I need to check for that a little bit closer, so we may check that situation up later too. So I do know it's holding good pressure on the tank and stuff, so I don't think we have a leak there. But I don't know. I'm not that good on hydraulics, but we're going to learn. <clears throat> it's kind of throwing me for a loop. These have no cooler whatsoever in them. You basically just use the oil in there and just circulate that way. So there's no engine cooler or anything like that that could be clogged up. So last time you guys were I did take the filter apart checked it we found some crap in the filter that was I think just my John Deere filter I took that off looking for restrictions um, other thing we could have a hose that's maybe collapsed inside and it's sucking and heating up 
I had a temp gun on. Everything's, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. Like I say, I couldn't get it to replicate it. It was actually cooling back down on me, but uh, I will tell you, this guy has little critters at his place, don't he? You see all the little <laughs> footprints in there? On yeah. those hoses and up that filter? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, maybe it's an angle circuit because I wasn't using very much, but that's enough talking. We're going to throw a gauge on here. Um, we're going to use this uh, port of power. So these crack off at 7,500 PSI, and we've got some components in there that may not be rated for it. So we're going to kind of stand back. We'll put you guys in there so if something does happen, you'll be the first to know. All right, got our gauge up here. So we're looking for about 7,500 PSI of pop off right in that range here. So we're going to kind of stand back and you ready to work your magic? <laughs> Kevin's got the air pump down here ready to go. Okay, Bubby. Popping off at 8,000. That's 7,400 7, or so right there. That side's all right. Oh, good. It didn't blow up either. Oh, good. I, I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're sitting up here in that 7,500 pound range. We're going to take a line off, check the one on the bottom side here, and see if it's in spec. Hey, bub. All right, you ready for round two on the uh, other one? When in doubt, mix it out. Seventy five hundred, a little more in it. Mm -hmm. Close enough for government work. Well, that's not our problem. What do you got? Something fun. So everything's passing tests so far. What are we doing? We got to detain like an hour or two with people. Um, I'm gonna start this thing up. Heat hydraulics up a little bit. We're gonna take it over next door and shove on some jumps and. Uh, really work that blade, work the angle system, and uh, see what kind of temperatures we can get out of it. We just don't know what's wrong with it. We're gonna do a cylinder drift test, um, or cycle test. So six and a half seconds uh, we've got from an idle to raise off the ground level all the way up the blade. So we'll do that like three times, average it all together, and see what we come up with there. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be in spec, but we could have a bypass in the cylinder, but then again, I don't think so. But I'm going to cut on some big hills, jumps over the side, cut off the side of that blade, work it pretty hard, work that angle system, and see if that's an issue in there. So we'll, uh, if not, we can't figure nothing out, we're going to get that heat gun and start shooting stuff. The only thing I can think of, we may have a crack in the valve body there. So if I don't fix it, then we'll probably yank that thing out, take a look at it, and go from there. throw that out too so my friends didn't know I drank beer like that. Alright, we got it up to 140. What are you showing there? Uh, on the filter I'm showing 160. So. Yeah. so you know what was weird? I was usually I just raised the, raised the blade all the way up and heat the oil up. Heating up slowly when I angled it to the left numbers are just climbing, climbing, climbing very quickly. I don't know if that's normal. I need to maybe look at another machine. You want to do that uh, test from ground all the way up? So I'm going to do, we're at the ground, we're going to raise this up. It's supposed to be six and a half seconds. So we're going to do that three times. You ready?
so I'm, I'm gonna cut off the side of the blade. We'll get it warm and see if we can find anything out. That just makes me want to stick my finger in there. <laughs>
this was once one of the greatest ponds ever to be fished. The only one that my Snoopy pole could cast from one side to the other. And then they just had to come in with their big machines, burning all that diesel fuel, and take away my favorite pond. What's this world coming to? That was my favorite fishing spot. I always cast it right there. Not anymore, it's gone. Full of dirt. Look, those bubbles, those are all the fish. That's what it is. It's the fish. They're upset. Caught a couple five pounders out of here. Seven and a half. One time I caught a nine, but nobody believed me. Alright, been running this dozer here for about an hour and a half, two hours, pushing it pretty hard. I'm sure Kevin is probably telling you I've been killing all these fish. Well, that's my favorite fishing there's spot. There's no fish in there. Yes, there is. And there's a reason why I'm doing this, I was told I to, so that's a whole nother discussion for another day. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We're not going to talk about that right now. Um, Gage is reading 194 up there on our temperature. It is creeping up, but I've been doing stupid stuff with it, running harder than we should be. Um, my hydraulic pump's reading about 190. This stuff up here is cooling down, so... And about 15 minutes ago, I heard that hydraulic pump. It's starting to whine barely. You can barely hear it. If you had the floorboard in it, you might not hear it, but... You got your nice clear hose? Do we have bubbles in here? Why is somebody trying to call me? I don't want to talk to you that bad. I can see that oil right there, but take a little sample. I'm trying to see if there's air in it. I don't think there is. It's gonna be hot. Ah! You got ah! me. Ah! <laughs> you got me, bud. Ah! Did your mama not teach you anything? I did not see any air bubbles in it. You gonna try it again? Yeah, let's do it again. <laughs> Stand right here. That hose is oh, a lot There's so many people laughing at you right now. There ain't no air bubbles in that at all. If it was sucking air, it'd be real foamy on top of the tank, and it's not, so... Man, I don't know. You know, the other thing I thought... I'll shut this off. The only other thing this could be... This suction line has a piece of rubber hose in it that's coming apart and it's sucking it down maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's We're on a wild goose chase now, bub. Well, I've never heard that pump. I don't know. You could hear it whining. There's a cricket here now too. Huh. Checking temperatures, but the hydraulic pump's not been any hotter, but it is hot now. Um, it's weird. You got any ideas here? Started one about 15 minutes ago, right before I called you to come back over. Yeah, yeah. I sent you over to take a nap, right? <laughs> it's freaking hot out here. What is it, 90 something today? That's pretty warm. It's a good day to test it out. Um, I don't know. I'm leaning towards the pump. I know it checked all out in the specs and everything, but I heard it a slight whine. I never heard that before. Right before I called you. Made me feel good, but that's an expensive fix too. Um, but this suction line kind of tank could have a uh, piece of rubber in it. I think the first thing to do once it cools down in the morning is to take that suction line off, inspect it, because if it's got a restriction, it's gonna make it heat up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we got plenty more dirt to push with it here again tomorrow. I think I may have a pump in stock too, but I'll check it out here. Um, what do you think about spraying this off a little bit just in case? You can probably do that with the Beaver or whatever that little pressure washer is they gave the us. Giraffe the giraffe pressure washer. Giraffe-y! <laughs> There's me at the end. Alright, we're going to take it back over to the shop. It's about the end of the day here. I'll spray that pump off in case we got to take it off tomorrow.
It's gonna be a great day. You're probably gonna call in sick, won't you? Maybe I should call in sick too. You know what? That, <laughs> Maybe I mean, who could who would do it? Uh, there's other guys. I call the John Deere dealer or something. Yeah. They're dying to have our business. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll be back in the morning. Hopefully, it'll be a lot cooler, and uh, we'll find the problem. Well, I see that uh, we didn't call in sick to work today. <laughs> Considered it. You did get her all clean in there, huh? <clears throat> Randy would be proud. So, I think first thing we need to do is actually pull that suction hose that comes off the tank right here and goes to that pump just to verify that it's not collapsed and sucking, making that pump work hard. If it looks good, then I guess we'll pull the pump out. Hooray! I got a brand new one in stock. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Pretty convenient. Huh. It's like at Seaside Tractor Sales here. Huh. Anyway, we're going to get that hose popped out of there and take a peek at it. Uh, did drain the oil out of it yesterday because we knew what we were going to be doing. We do have to pull that hydraulic pump off. We'll have to pull a vacuum on that transmission tank because when we pull that pump off the transmission pump, there's oil that spews out about the size of your little pinky mm -hmm. finger. But uh, cross your fingers, it's just that line. And we'd be done today. Sure. It's not that easy. Sure. How's it going? I got my end off. It's about to be a party, bub. Oh. I'm break your wrist. Must got one bar on a battery. Yeah, we could even have a collapsed pressure hose or something too. <clears throat> Chances are pretty rare. I don't understand how it can pass the pressure and flow test with flowing colors. And it looks oily. Mm. It's about to be. Hmm. Okay, I'll make you pull it off. <laughs> it's stuck good. <laughs> I have to put the twisty twisty on it. Huh. How about that? She broke loose there. <laughs> Come on, Just baby. Like giving birth. Okay. Oh. There you go. What are you seeing there? It's like a colonoscopy, bub. It is, isn't it? I did not see any broken rubber pieces flopping or anything. Mm. Did you? No polyps. No polyps. <laughs> you want to put an MD after a name now? Yeah. Well, that's kind of not good. <laughs> exactly. Do not separate stuff there. Oh, okay. You spray your bolt from here. And I got this super sweet long extension. Oh yeah, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she not been out for a while? Did you get all the bolts out of her? I'm gonna do the right bank over here. What up? Did you spray the hinge back here? Mm -hmm. Really? I'll get a pry bar and help uh, break the uh, suction loose. How about that? Yeah, that's what it is. side broke loose over there? This side come loose. Yeah. The old hinge is not happy. Mm -mm. Need more power? Might need some. Ah, I need some more extension. Starting to move. Don't worry. Old Harbor Freight broke it loose. 
No, oh, now you're getting real scary. <laughs> hey, we like to party. Yeah, you got twice the impact there, buddy. I know, right? Harbor Freight, number one. Well, boys, Harbor Freight did it once again. Yeah, the big bad boy half inch one. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna blame it on? What? The painter putting too much paint oh, on the yeah. threads. Oh yeah, 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 that's hey, what it is. This <laughs> under seat, seat heater hmm. appears to have a animal problem in here. Weird, wonder why. Huh, pretty sure that's not working very good. A little foot heater. We'll throw that out on Kevin's side because that's uh, the best place to put it. clearly goes out your side. There's no way. Clearly goes out to your side. Yeah, the hoses, your side. No, the hoses are on your side. Don't be scratching my paint, bub. Oh, it helps if we unplug the wires. You know that? Yeah. They were. We'll get some side cuts. Found that there. Hawkeye City and you're the mayor, bud. <laughs> oh gosh, that sounded great. All right, hydraulic pumps way down there. You guys seen us work on these dudes before. They're fun. You know what makes this one even more fun? It has that big thing on the back of it with the cable and it winds up and that I means there's a drive to shaft it. to it back there. And mm. I'm pretty sure if you look this up in the book, they probably tell you to take the winch off the back of the tractor first. Huh. Well, we're going to try to cheat the odds. Huh. This might be where you phone a friend like Mason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to set you guys up here, and we're going to get after getting this thing unbolted. This sure looks real familiar. You know what? What's that random hose? Looks like somebody got an extension cord from their local hardware store and used it for something. Well, I've been to Bear Hardware. Burr, burr. All right, we'll bring you back when we get ready to yank her out here. You just never know when you so, need it, bud. I had something that cracked me up. I had to break into our time lapse here. I got this Harbor Freight Chrome Vandium Super High Dollar. Three quarter on this side. 25, 30 seconds on this side. Just in now, case who uses 25, need. 30 seconds? You're about to. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Only Harbor Freight. All right, we got fifth and sixth hand down there. That'd be Mr. Mason. He's Mason. taking the drive shaft loose from the back of the pump. We got that yellow plate holds the drive shaft saver. We're hoping to okay. take this bolt loose in this pump, twist it, and you get your drive shaft off. And a little pry bar or something. And if you hear Kevin's stomach over gurgling, that's uh, hey, he's good for scooping. That's our vacuum. Uh, on the transmission tank right now because we will have oil come out of the back of this last transmission pump right here So there's a little plug and it'll shoot a stream out like a 3-8 stream if you don't do that, so and We're probably just gonna main handle this pump out by hand Can You pull back on that Mason Get it off What do you want me to do? Go back down this bit. Come up. Get that hose there. Is that strap going to stay on there? Yep. Alright, there's one pump. The guys are going to get some cardboard. We're going to set it down there. And Get some more stuff off of it and maybe even bust it apart and take a peek at it. You ready for this? That one handed set down. What a Bet man. You guys wish you were a man. What a man. 
Did you just film that in the vertical mode? <laughs> this is why record. you're not allowed to have the camera, I just bud. hit record, bud. <laughs> I felt like people needed to see me take that bracket off. Oh, my gosh. I felt like they needed to know. Hey, that's got that same seal that we just put in that other dozer. Oh, we'll just put a new seal in it. Go figure. That's not what it needs, I don't think. We need to take note of this hose orientation, take it off, and then we'll bust the pump apart because everybody's wanting to see the inside of it. It's weird. Nine sixteenths, Mr. Mason. All right, we got a new pump here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and take this one apart just to see what it looks like here. Oh, you got the big deep one there. Mm. Can you take this cap off the back of here, Mason? <coughs> Excuse me, I did make a new um, pressure hose too. I didn't trust the old one. So this is the main pressure hose that comes out of the bottom of the pump and feeds the control valve. So eliminate that issue too. Yeah, I need a man. No, you know what you need? It's a hammer. No. Secretly disguised as one size bigger wrench. Now those are good, ain't they? Oh, you mean you wanted to do it this way? See, that's no fun. You can't hold it now. Well, I needed a man to hold this in. Oh. <laughs> Mason, we need that tool. Bring that tool over here, Mason. Oh, he's got his own tool. Got dueling. So you need to put that yellow piece back on. You need to put nuts on here so it's flush with these. Mm -hmm. so you need to screw one of these on here. So it's a nice even plane with those. Then we'll put that yellow piece on there. First side. You may have to get out a real, a real hammer, not an icon. I see these prying locations here. Yeah. What's inside? What's inside? What's that metal from, just from us taking it apart? I'm not seeing uh, anything jumping out at me. You got a little wearage on that case there. I'm seeing. A little bit of wearage here, like it's been run dry. You guys can see that there. But, oh, it's enough to cause her issue? Could be. It's like somebody's running without oil at one point in time, you know? Mm. Maybe these uh, bushings are getting worn too. It's not major, I've seen them way worse and still work. You know how almost identical this looks to that pump we had out last week? Sure. Huh? That is true. It's a little bit different shaft. Yeah. So yeah, we're just bringing oil in here. And it goes to these gears and basically compresses it and sends it out the pressure side. That's what they call a gear pump. 
but these end plates don't have much wear on only thing we can do now is put a new one in it and go run it again and see what it does I guess huh mm -hmm. I mean the thing was this thing's holding spec and, and pressure and volume but the bushing's a little bit rough down in there but I don't know let's put the new one in and see bring you guys in a little closer you can kind of see right there where that um, gear has been grinding on that a little bit see around with that ore the bushings are getting worn some still not a smoking gun we've seen this little line right here I don't know if you guys can see it almost looks like a crack but I don't think it is I don't know it's not a smoking gun is it mm -mm. all right Got a new pump, got a crane system hooked up. That'd be me. Are oh, you you're so strong. I gotta clean your spot off. I don't oh, want yeah. You. Look at that. Will you, you clean my hand for me, too? You can't be signing autographs, no. dirty. Everybody out there waiting for us. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna set you guys up here and we're gonna slam this thing back in there. You, you need to go underneath, Mason. To the bottom, to the pit, Mason. You're gonna catch the back of it. Here comes the crane 5000. Oh, it's a brand new hose. We did put a new o ring on it too. What you need, bub? All right, we got the pump in there. Mason's hooking the drive shaft up. Got all the hydraulic lines on. I'm just gonna put new oil in it. We did did just put new oil in it just a few hours ago. We had it apart last time, but I don't trust it. The guy may have got it hot. Um, we get everything buttoned up. We gotta put the heater back in there, the floor heater. And uh, one thing we can do is take it out and uh, run it again and see what's up with it. So I'll uh, run it for another hour and a half, two hours. and see what it does. Randy, you're all done. You can go home now. Uh -uh. <laughs> Randy's never done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're on the step. Hold <laughs> her back, bub. Randy's here to party. Home. He needs one of those stickers. Tilt her back, Randy. You set that back outside there. Keep up the good work. Are we ready to fire this thing up? See how many leaks we got? No leaks, bub. Eh, I'm gonna go next door and run her, I guess. We'll leave the full board out just in case. All right, we're gonna start her up here and see what's happening. Oh no, spilt my tea. All right, back over here, I'm gonna run it for an hour and a half or so, get it good and warm, and make sure that we fixed the problem. Fingers crossed that it worked, so uh, just have to see how this goes. Alright, got some more dirt knocked down, but uh, all is not well for sure. We've still got uh, 
overheating issues. I run it up, it got up to about 185, 186. Uh, we've been looking at it here, it's about down to 182. But man, we're running out of options here. I'm starting to, uh, I don't know, run out of things to do. The only thing I can see, the pump still has about 170, about 180 degree oil coming out of it. It's about 179 right now. So the pressure line, this is that new one we replaced, comes up here. Of course, we're shooting through the rubber, but it's um, it's hot right here at this valve. It's 170 right there. I go the next valve over, it drops down to 165 or so. And I keep going over, and it's cooling down as I go across the stack. So um, I did replace this with that new flow control uh, relief port, but. The only option we got left, it has to be in this valve body. There's, I mean, we're out of, out of options. I don't think that pump was it. It didn't look like it when we took it apart. It did have a little wear, but it wasn't nothing major. So we'll pull this thing back in the shop, let it cool down. We'll pull a vacuum on this tank. The only thing I know to do is take this valve body out, get it on the table, take it apart. We may have a crack somewhere or something like that. It's, it's going to be hard to tell. So, but uh, that's the last piece of the puzzle. But. Uh, Oh, it's weird. I've never seen nothing like it. So I'm going to take it back to the shop, let it cool down during lunch, and uh, we'll break it apart here in a little bit. Shit. Make oh, sure to man. be hot and sweaty. Whew. Yeah. That was pretty hard. Ooh, hey, what'd you get out? The control valve. Oh, wow. How I've long been have working you been hard here? here for the last hour. <laughs> That's weird. You got a lot of tools out, too. Why are you all greasy and I'm not? Huh. That's weird. <laughs> Maybe you did it and I didn't. <laughs> All right, Mr. Kevin actually took that out, or you guys probably figured that out. He likes to act is like it, he does things. It, was it from all my tears that they could see? <laughs> I don't know. Right, we're going to take this thing apart, inspect it. I got a uh, print off. I got a part of pieces here from John Deere. Man, our fan is windy. That's a good thing today. But yeah, we're gonna get a part and dissect it here. Maybe we'll find a smoking gun because we've not found it yet. All right, we got this thing. We've been looking at it here for a little while. I'm trying to find a smoking gun, what's going on here. And we're just wondering if one of these surfaces is warped supposed to be sealing metal to metal up right here. I did find a little smoking gun. I don't know if you guys can see right there. It's kind of shiny and it's uh looks like it might have not been sealing up. You can see the same thing right here where it's kind of shiny not sealing up. So we're actually gonna set some uh, fine sandpaper up on a big flat surface and dust these a little bit and see if we see any spots pop up and then we'll uh, take these all apart and rebuild them. So. Not that one. Pretty flat. Pretty flat, but I got a little spot clean up. Yeah, I don't see nothing. All right, we basically did a rebuild. We did not find any more smoking guns either, did we? No. Put all new seals, O-rings everywhere, inspected all the springs, all that good stuff. Looked for cracks, we did what we could, so. Um, it might have been leaking in one surface, so we're not sure, but I don't think that would have caused it, so. Hopefully, it fixes it, but I don't have high expectations. I guess you get it in here, I could still run it yet today. That's right. We're really, really running out of options. I mean, we got another valve we can throw in there, I guess, but we need to try that one first, so see what happens. All right, I was gonna say I put that in there, but I did not. Mr. Kevin's been working on that. I've been uh, doing some other things, but it's got her all in there. We're still good on the oil. 
take her out and go try it one more time. Man, I did a good job. Oh, yeah, I did a good job. See, I'm all hot and sweaty like I've been yeah. working. Well, I'm going to go run it here for an hour and a half or so in the day and uh, see if it works. I don't have high expectations. What are we going to do if this don't work? Dig a hole. I'll start digging a hole right now. Huh. Go get the valve body off of the other machine. What about the hose? Did you replace it, the other one? You said it was good. Okay. I don't know. I'll run it tonight and I'll think about it. It's going to be perfect. It better be. That's what it is. It better be. Everybody's left here for the day. She's still running hot. It got up to 190 there. Um, I don't understand what's going on. That stuff. 172. I don't know. It's weird. The only thing we've not done, we probably should have done this, is check the uh, pickup in the tank. We're going to drain the oil out in the morning. We'll take this cover off. And uh, this is a suction line. Maybe it's got something in it. We've literally checked every other single part. Or there's a crack in there that we did not see or something. But Usually when I've had cracks in those before, they'll crack in that uh, cast housing and a lot of times oil, you know, you'll pull the blade back and it shoves oil one way and it'll try to, you know, that crack will fill up and try to shove it back the other way and have resistance on it, but I don't feel any of that stuff, but I don't know. It's starting to drive me nuts. I'm about over it, so I'll be back in the morning. Alright, good times once again. You guys see me take that cover off. Inspect inside that tank. I was looking for a uh, filter or strainer on this um, suction line here. There was nothing I didn't think there was. It's just a steel tube that goes in. It's very simple. The return dumps back into the tank. It's all empty and open. Nothing blocking out there. So what I'm going to do next is uh, go pull a uh, control valve off a parts machine out there and rebuild it. Put new seals in it. Throw it in there. And uh, hopefully that fixes it because we're running out of options real quick. Alright, so this is a valve back out of this dozer we've been having problems with. This is one out of a parts dozer. I took it out, cleaned it up, put all new O-rings and seals in it, kind of like we did over here. I wasn't going to bore you guys with it. So I'm going to take it over and stick it in there and uh, hopefully fixes our problem. Did I fix it? Shazam! It's back together. I doubt I fixed it. I don't have good. I don't have tape in my. Oh uh, well. We're running. That makes well, I mean, two we're of like us. out of out of things to try. Out of them. I don't know what else to try. We're gonna clean this mess up. I'm gonna take it out to run it. You guys have seen me do that ten thousand times, so I'm not gonna bore you with that again. But <laughs> we'll all uh, be back here in an hour and a half. Hopefully, with good news or bad news. I don't know. What are we gonna do next? He's been painting all morning. Maybe I should start digging a hole so we can just drive it <laughs> off in, it in it. there. I think I said that already, but hey, you always want to get your uh, your uh, drag line out. Yeah. Talking to another guy last night. We're gonna if it does it again. I'm gonna check the head pressure. Basically, that means when it's sitting at idling, it shouldn't be building up much pressure, like a couple hundred pounds or less. But I know originally I went back in the videos and watched and it didn't have any of that. Um. No worries. I mean, I took this filter out the first time, but I just need to quit talking and go run it. Get her dead, bud. See what happens. I just don't know. It's going to be fine. I put, it's got all new hoses everywhere on it, so it couldn't be a hose. At least in the loop system for the hot dogs. So. I don't know. We'll find out. Next clip. guys can see how much dirt I've been shoving but we've been pushing a lot of dirt here I think we finally got it or uh, I've been working it hard here 
been bouncing back and forth between 182 and 183. It quit climbing up, so once I seen it bouncing back and forth, it made me feel pretty good. Um, yesterday or the day before, this is the third day I've been working this, just kept raising up the temperature, but it's been sitting steady at 183, 182 for a while, so I even seen it go down to 181 once, but I feel like we got her fixed, so it must have been a crack in that mouth, but I'm gonna head back over to the shop and uh, we'll, uh, do a little final, final walk around here. What we doing, Bob? That the railroad tracks away over there. That's called. Oh, he lost him, something. Bob. Oh, he's out. Oh crap! You can't say stuff like I'll that on the out. internet. He's throwing, look at, we got this guy on camera over here. I don't know if I can zoom in. Hey, check him out. He's like, yeah, that ain't mine. No, nope, that ain't it. Either. Bob, you're on camera in your Toyota Tundra. What is that, T100? Yeah. <laughs> that guy over here is throwing stuff out of his truck. <laughs> That's pretty wild. It is. Smile, <laughs> you're on YouTube. What color is that truck? I don't know what you call that, slate or something? Fucking gray. Oh, they got camper shell. Four door. We got you on camera, bud. He's still Let's chucking stuff. Let's just hope he's chucking rocks. I hope so, but still, you don't throw stuff on somebody else's property. <laughs> it's on the railroad, but I don't, I mean. <laughs> Is that what he's doing? He's going for a railroad? <laughs> Maybe we should run out there and catch him in the road. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all right. There'll be a few hundred thousand people seeing maybe. <laughs> all right. Well, what did we find out? We don't know. Had something wrong. Is he still out there? Traffic's you're you're distracted. Now. We're doing right. videos. That, oh, look, check this. Now out. that's not a rock. That's trash, Bubby. What is he doing? Or this is getting. I know you guys probably can't see way over there. He had I was a tarp. Say. <laughs> he got he a tarp out. That got a crap out. He got a tarp out like he's gonna throw it away and put it back in his truck. You think he's seen us? You know what it is? It's one of those Toyota drivers, right? Yeah, that's what it is. Don't litter. I got you on camera. <laughs> oh, did he see us? We're all, we're all sitting there staring at him. <laughs> he says, I'm just going to go ahead and get up in my truck. What's he quick. doing? Should we all wave at him? Let's wave at him. Hello. <laughs> you done been caught. A slate towed a tundra with black wheels and camper shell. Right. Watch out, it's probably the same guy that's been dumping crap over here next door on me. I hate that. <laughs> Somebody's been dumping brushing crap over here. Anyway, what did we find out? Something in the uh, valve body's messed up, cracked or something. I have no idea. But you fixed it, Bob. Well, yeah, it's A it's plus. Working. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can hear me, but it was going up to about. Uh, before it just kept steadily rising. It went up to about 183 and actually come back down to 182 while I was running it, bouncing back and forth. It never went over that. When I drove it over here, it went down to 180. So uh, yesterday and the day before when I drive it over, it just kept climbing. So, um, and yesterday when I keep running, it would just keep climbing up to 190, 200 or whatever. So I feel good about it, but I don't know what it was. We never seen anything in the other valve. It's gotta be a crack, I don't I mean, the spools are all centered. If a spool wasn't centered, it could be doing that but is there any way to test that magnaflux something expensive probably well i'll tell you what our people in the car are going to drop something in the comments but right. we'll keep it in the box when this video comes out you guys got any good ways to test the old valve body and uh we might try that and do a video or something on it i don't know i know magnaflux but i don't know if that would work that well i guess it might it's just really weird really weird situation i pulled my hair out over it and lost sleep and I'm laying in bed at 10 o'clock last night and I, had, I got my phone out and started just <laughs> even had a 30 minute conversation with the guy but anyway and this thing's cost me thousands and thousands of dollars out of my pocket probably five or six or seven thousand dollars to be honest with you but uh, I've never seen that happen there's always a first for everything it's really really weird so but, uh, hopefully you guys never see this thing back on a video again I sure hope I don't see it again <laughs> You won't see it on video <laughs> ever again. No. We're going to send it back to the customer I sold it to you probably six months ago and let him try it out. But uh, 
Man, I've moved a lot of dirt with it, I'll tell you that. We had to go put fuel in it again while I go for the second time, so. If you guys like the little video, make sure you do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button down below. That's right. That way me and Kevin can keep uh, watching litter bugs. Watching oh. litter bugs on the road, yeah. Oh. Do not litter. We need to put signs up. It's pretty brave though in the middle of the day. Yeah. Right beside a business. Hey, did they tell you what I bought at lunch? No. No, I bought another, I mean a can of worms, but big, big old green can of worms. <laughs> it's in the bulldozer form too. And it oh, starts yeah? with the eight. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. It's gonna one be. Of them. It's gonna be epic. One of them flea we just got. We just got cases. done. We just got done with one project, and I just literally got the most epic can of worms. Was so. it a steal? Well, <laughs> I'll let you know when it gets here. I think it is, but you know how that goes. But uh, if you guys want to see what that epic thing is, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And uh, we thank thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next time.